I'm Mariana Spring. I'm the BBC's first ever uh, specialist disinformation and social media reporter. And what that means uh, is that I investigate the human cost of online conspiracy theories, trolling, abuse, disinformation, uh, social media investigations in general. Uh, and I've been very busy during the pandemic. Here's our specialist disinformation reporter, Mariana Spring. Anti-vaccine conspiracies have surged on social media and everyday citizens have found themselves on the front line battling mistruths. The main story that's shaped my career has been uh, online disinformation and conspiracy theories around the pandemic in particular. I spent a lot of time investigating uh, conspiracy movements on social media, the tactics that they use for Panorama for example, or um, where that movement is headed for, for Newsnight. We have lots of misconceptions about who believes online conspiracies and why they do, um, that people have to be stupid or mad or um, ridiculous. And actually, that's not the case at all. Um, and they tell us a lot about how social media works and the impact it's having on our world. They tell us a lot about society um, and new fault lines that are opening up across communities. With a lot of my reporting, I really try to arrive with empathy, I think particularly when it comes to online conspiracies and also trolling. People can tend to have quite a hardened attitude to it. They don't want to understand, they've kind of shut themselves off. Um, and I want to be able to understand so that I can investigate and interrogate and hold to account. And what would life have looked like if you hadn't emerged from that rabbit hole? I said I might not be here. Went to some dark places, Mariana. When I attend a rally, you know, we'll think a lot about the personal security of me, making sure that we have a team that's fully equipped, that's prepared for what's going on, that we understand more about who's at that protest and why, so that we're ahead of the game, essentially. Um, and particularly when I did the report for Newsnight that was about um, you know, attending these anti-lockdown rallies, I actually spoke to a number of protesters who I interviewed for that report before we headed there. Um, and I think that's really important, not just understanding how they'd become a part of this movement and how their often very legitimate concerns, um, uh, political criticisms had become muddled with online conspiracies, but also so that we were accepted within that protest so that we actually could speak to people and we could try and understand and that's not always easy i mean we were greeted with quite a lot of hostility there was one moment where um there were people who started shouting that we should be hanged and that we were bbc scum and we were you know retreating back and i genuinely did feel quite frightened a big group formed around us when I first started receiving abuse and threats online for the reporting I was doing, I really wanted to investigate it some more because I couldn't understand why there wasn't more being done to protect people from this kind of abuse. Um, and I also noticed how gendered a lot of the hate I was getting. It would always focus on me being a young woman. Um, it would often include rape threats, death threats, really aggressive language. Um, and I wanted to get to the bottom of exactly why that was happening and and, and who it was impacting, um, particularly women in this case. For the past six months, I've been anxious enough to report the most serious hate I received to the police. I've now reported a latest new batch of threats and abuse, um, some that really frighten me because they seem much more violent. Over the past five years, there's been a 107% increase in people, mainly women, reporting online hate. But over the same period, only a 32% increase in the number of arrests. I often receive lots of messages from people um, affected by abuse and trolling, but also by disinformation and conspiracies. Um, and I kept thinking how if I, as a reporter who you know, is able to contact social media sites and the police, I, I'm still experiencing this. What about all the other people? What about everyone else who's having to put up with this in their day-to-day -day lives when it's frightening, when it's scary, when it's really affecting them? And in, in many ways, it sounds sort of a bit weird to say, but you know, I, I, I'm very fortunate relative to so many of the people that get in touch with me. You know, I'm really well supported and I understand how this works and I investigate it and I get it and I know kind of who to get in touch with about different things. A lot of these people are totally on their own um, and so I really want to be able to, to help them with my reporting and to reveal and expose what's happening to them and to hold to account social media companies or um, other institutions or other people that are causing that real world harm or a link to that real world harm.